Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirisho here, and now, let's just get into it. In the last part, a number of things happened. Superboy Prime came to Connor Kent, and he wanted to talk to him. Connor is not fit to be Superboy. That's what Prime thinks. He's the only survivor from his Earth. And Connor? He's not being a superhero. He gave it up on the other world because Clark was a murderer, a dictator. And then, here, he gave it up again. All because he still doesn't trust Clark, and he wants to be with Magon. He wants to settle down, get married again, and maybe start a family. But Prime? He doesn't care. And Superboy? He tried to fight and hold off Prime, but he called in for help. We currently do cut to Superboy Prime. Right now, he does stand there. He looks at many of the heroes that are there. You have half the Justice League. You have the Teen Titans and members of Young Justice. You have heroes here who died in the other timelines. And right now, Prime, he does face off against many of them. As you do actually have Hal Jordan and the Parallax version of himself. You also do actually have Earth-1 Superman a.k.a. Dictator Superman, who, he's still a bit more surprising what's going on. And right now, Superboy Prime, he starts to lay into everybody. He starts, to, he starts to show off his power. He begins to tear his way through the heroes. You have heroes all over, who, they fall to his power. And a lot of things start to happen. We do actually have Voss. Voss she currently does a flip on the situation because she heard Uncle Clark call for Voss. And Voss, yeah. She currently does go to float over the battlefield and she sees many heroes. They've all just been torn apart. And, oh my god. Her looking around. And there actually is Clark, who he is facing off against Boy Prime. And he is going to take him down. But Prime is just going to throw around Clark, punching him over and over. And there is whenever Voss does go to watch men get knocked away and smashing to the ground. Before Clark is going to get back up. And Voss is going to turn and call out for her dad. And we do actually have back on Azeroth. Deku currently does sit there meditating. And he's still trying to understand what to do. His powers feel weird. They feel strange. And then he hears something. He hears it tear through dimensions. And he feels them. The weakened barriers. The multiverse. No. Voss. Look who's gonna turn. And he does get to disappear. Right now, Raven, she sat there. She was waiting. Seeing Azrath back in its prime, it was beautiful. And then Deku, he vanished, right before her eyes. We do actually have Voss, who, she was going to turn and see her father. As Deku, he does float there in the sky. And Voss stares at him, surprised, because of the way he looks. His face is more, well, bushy. His beard, it's grown. And then there's his hair. He's... He hasn't cut it in a while. And Deku does a turn to look down. And they're actually a Superboy Prime. Who, he does going to turn and see Deku. Before this, going to try and tell him. They ruined him! Prime, stepping forwards. They ruined him! Look what they did! They covered him in blood! They made him a killer! And Deku does stare at Prime. He's lost his fucking mind. That's what happened here. Okay, they're considering forwards and telling Prime. They need to chat. Will he listen to him? And Prime just stare back at Deku, eyes full of rage and no restraint. Prime rushing towards Deku and going to grab at him. And there is over Deku, him and Prime, they do go to grab onto each other. Voss being knocked backward because of the force these two had just making contact. Now, Deku, he does going to turn to the battlefield. 
and he sees many heroes dead. And he's caught off guard. There's no way. Why? They go turning back and smashing his fist out at Prime, knocking him across the face as Prime is sent flying backwards. And then there actually is one for Deku. He does a turn and watch Clark stand back up. And Deku, he does get mad. Clark turning his head and seeing him. He hasn't seen him in almost... Wow, he's definitely changed. Clark going to look back towards Prime. As the Earth's heroes, they're trying to figure out what to do. Prime tore apart their forces. I mean, Shazam's down and... Fuck, that says a lot, doesn't it? Okay, okay, but that's a problem, right? Okay, but where's their Shazam? That one fell out of the sky the other day, but that's bad. So, is theirs down too? That'd be on Clark's mind. Where's Billy? Where's Diana? Where's everybody else? Did he already get them? That being on Clark's mind. And there is actually Deku, who does go flying towards Prime. And Prime does go to turn and throw his fist out at Deku. Deku actually going to stand there and take the punch. As Prime, he does go see Deku just stand there staring at him. Before Deku does go to bring his hand up and grab it up towards Prime's throat. And Prime, he does so go to grab at Deku's arm, trying to knock him away. Knock him out of the way. And Deku does stare down at Prime. As he does try to use his powers. The new abilities he's gained. The things he can do. He can change the way matter is. If he can change matter, then he wants to change him back. Deku trying to think. He wants to change Superboy Prime into a normal human. Maybe he can do that. Maybe give it a try. Deku trying to attempt it. However, there's where he feels his powers fight back. Something tugs back at him. And he doesn't make it feel right. Prime smashing Deku across the face. And Deku, he does this one stumbling backwards. Him, gonna bring his hands down, and go to bring them up to Superboy Prime. As Prime yells at him, Whatever that was, that didn't feel good. So stop it! And Deku does stare at Prime. The two rushing forwards and colliding fist. And there actually is Clark. Clark is confused. Because the planet is shaking. But how? Prime is different. He doesn't have their weaknesses. And that's definitely an issue. This being where someone does come flying up. And there is Black Adam. He does come flying in and grabbing on a Superboy Prime. Him going to try and put him up and into a hold. Angling him backwards before shouting Sh Shazam. Now, Prime is struck by the lightning. And there actually is where Clark does come flying in. Him about to punch Boy Prime across the face, as there is where Prime is going to break the hold Lightning has on him, or Black Adam has on him. Now, right now there is where Clark, he tries to smash Boy Prime across the face. But Prime goes to knock away Clark, and then going to go back to his Deku. Him throwing at his fist, as Deku he does get punched across the face. Deku going to turn and blast Boy Prime away with his heat vision. And Prime was going to watch Deku's eyes glow a bright red. And Deku, he would blast out his heat vision at full force. And Prime, he does try to blast his heat vision back at Deku. And there is where he actually is putting in a lot more effort. This feels different. Something's wrong here. Prime actually is going to fly upwards into the air. And Deku is going to turn and fly up after him. As there actually is Clark. He's confused. He couldn't touch Prime, but Deku, he drew blood. He couldn't even scratch him. That being on Clark's mind, as Deku and Prime, the two go flying out into space. And Deku, yeah. Him and Prime currently are making their way through the universe, as the two are relentlessly punching away at each other. And there is what the two do go to fly directly into a star them smashing into it and going through the other side, and the two still throwing blow after blow after blow. Before Deku, he does get to feel himself smash into something, and Prime actually is going to throw Deku away as Deku is going to turn and see the remains of a Green Lantern. 
him, going to at least look back towards Prime, as people start to create constructs up around him. And Prime, he does hear it, and so does Deku. As his Green Lantern ring, we're going to resonate. Lethal force is authorized. And the Green Lanterns, they sort of blast away at both of these two. And Deku, he does go flying forwards back towards Prime, as Prime is going to turn his head and blast away five of the Green Lanterns. And Deku, he does go smashing into Prime and through constructs. The Green Lanterns, surprised and confused. As Deku, he does go to turn and throw Prime, him blasting him away with power from his hand. And Prime does actually look back at Deku. As Deku, there is where he does to at least grin a bit, and his eyes go to start glowing red again, before they go to split into two separate sets. And there is where Prime does stare at Deku confused, his hair beginning to turn white, as Deku is going to blast at Superboy Prime again, and Prime is struck by beams from two different directions. And he's confused, as Deku he does go rushing forwards and smashing through Prime, the two flying to a planet and smashing down into the ground. As Deku, he does hold Prime there as he's going to pull back his fist. And tell Prime, Give up. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> You're different. I am different. Deku's fist begin to glow. As Deku does tell Prime, Give it a rest. He can't win. What he's done is simple. He has no weaknesses. In Prime, he smiles. He smiles an evil grin. And he should ask Deku if he's never been hit as hard as he could. And Deku does stare at Prime. Prime going to throw out his fist as hard as he can. And this time, it's more than just reality that shakes. People, they feel something shift. Even Lex Luthor from Earth 3 he felt that blow, and he was concerned. That shook creation. How is that possible? Fascinating. This being confusing. And there is where Deku, he threw his fist out to meet Superboy Prime. And the two, they collided their fist. Now, Prime is going to let loose his full power. Him getting mad. And there is where he does going to knock Deku away up into space. Him flying fast and flying towards Deku. Smashing into Deku, as Deku, he does a punch away at Prime's ribs. Him feeling something, actually beginning to give. And there is where Prime just goes smashing back through and on to the moon. Him cracking into the, well, cracking into the celestial body or the planetary body or... That's confusing. Prime smashes into the moon. Cracking into it and destroying a part of it. As he currently does, going to bring his fist up and smash Deku across the face. Over and over. Him knocking Deku away. And Deku does get sent flying down into the, into the earth. Him smashing down in Central America. As Deku, he does going to lay there on the ground. And Prime does come flying back in. As Deku, he does going to bring his hands up and stand. Him going to throw his fist out and smash Prime across his face. And Prime, he's sent flying through the air. Deku, going to move fast, and teleport. Deku, going to bring up his hand, and strike Prime across his head. As Prime does get thrown downwards and out, and Deku is going to turn, bringing up his hand and grabbing Prime's cape. Him, going to throw Prime down to the ground, and then going to bring his hands down, wrapping the cape around Prime's neck before Deku is going to throw his foot down onto the back of Prime's neck and pull onto the cape. In Prime, he starts to struggle to breathe. And Deku, he does stare down. Him getting madder. Him getting angrier. And there actually is our clerk. He does come flying up. And he sees this thing fighting Prime. But it's... No. Deku going to look up and stare directly at clerk. And there is where the Flash does come running up. Deku turning to see... Wally? Or another version of Wally. And Deku, he does stare at him. As he does try to tell him, The speedsters have a plan. Get him to his feet. And let them run. And Deku, he does stare at Wally. Going to nod. Before, Deku does a pick Prime up and start running. 
and there is where the speedsters, they all start to take off. You have a Wooly West. You have a Barry Allen. You have a Jay Garrick. And right now, they run Superboy Prime into the Speed Force. He's too dangerous to be kept anywhere. But that's just one of the problems here. And there is where Deku, he does stand there, floating in the air. Him looking at Clark. As Deku, his skin does get to return back to normal. Him going to look down. And Clark does stare back at Deku. Before stepping forwards, asking him, What did he do? What was that? And Deku is going to turn back, telling Clark, He is not apologizing. He got stronger. Duville, what did you do? That power, you looked like Trigon. I know. I have control. Honestly, it feels interesting. Does it? Yeah. I gotta go. Deku going to look away. Him looking in a direction and teleporting away. And Clark is confused. He just vanished. He moved too fast. That on Clark's mind. As Deku currently does ret return back to the monitor's ship. Where Havenger... She's surprised to see Deku. And Deku currently does get a walk through the area. Him walking through the corridor as Havenger. She does go flying up and past Deku. Her turn to express. She's been trying to find him for some time. There is another problem at hand. And Deku does get a look toward, towards her. Staring at her and asking her. If it's the monitor again. No, no. He appears to have been defeated. You were battled at the beginning of creation. It... Then I'm done. And I'm going to turn and walk away. And Havenger is surprised. Deku is going to walk into the room. And see Kara. Him looking down as he does go to bring out his hand. He needs to figure this out. This power. It's different. He feels like he knows what he can do. But he doesn't know what he could do at all. He feels like he's... <laughs> he feels like he's unstoppable. Keep it together, Duville. <sighs> Try to stay calm. That being on Deku's mind. However, he's also trying to make sure he can monitor the Red Lantern core. He wants to try and figure this out. If he can control rage, harmonize with it, then... Things will be good, but trying to stay angry, he feels his ring pulling away at him. And if he can do this, if this works, it's going to... This being where Havenger is going to walk into the room. Her seeing Deku bring his hand up to Kara. And Kara right now, she does go to start opening her eyes. The last thing she remembered, she was rushing towards the monitor. And the monitor brought up his hand, blasting a hole in her chest. She just remembers falling backwards and seeing it whenever her head went limp. Her is not going to jump up as Deku, he is going to bring his hands up, wrapping Kara into a hug. And Kara is confused, her looking around and somewhat being a bit more surprised. As Deku, he does go somewhat pull away. And Kara does stare at him, her turning her head to see him with his long white hair and his beard. <laughs> Kara, I'm, I'm happy that that worked. Duvel, oh my god. What, what's going on? Where am I? The last thing I remember, the monitor. He's, he's dead. Duvel, how long has it been? You, I'm fine, Kara. It's been six months. You died. Kara a bit more surprised. Her gonna bring her hand down and onto her chest. Before there's no hole. Duvel, I Kara, it's I'm so glad you're awake. Nigga's just gonna bring his hands out again. And whenever he does gonna open his fist, the red lantern rings on his hands, they do gonna fly away. And Deku, he does gonna feel it. Him gonna turn and cast off the butcher. As right now, the Butcher, 
it goes to fly back through space. It needs to find something. It needs to either find a new host or go back to the Red Lantern power battery and reseal itself within. And that's just one problem. They're going to turn back towards Kara and hug her. Before I do, should I tell her? There's so much to tell her. So many things she needs to see. It's a lot to explain, but they're paradoxes. Him pulling away. And Kara is going to stare at Deku's hair. She wants to know what happened to him. Her asking the question. And Deku, he does to sit there silently. Before going to express to her, it's complicated. But he's taking on dark forces. And he's gaining more powers. Kara is staring at Deku. As Deku is going to bring up his hands. Telling Kara. He's understanding what he can do. It's more than that. He's... He's getting better. Tufel. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just... I'm happy you're back. Listen. It's going to be a lot to explain, but we'll stay in Azeroth for right now. What? I told you. It's a lot to explain. Just... Let me do this, Kara, okay? I can to inform you as to everything with time, but it's best that you just witness it. Kara confused. And Deku is going to take her back to the plane of Azeroth. As there is where he does need to go around, he needs to talk to some people. And one person he needs to, he needs to talk to. His best friend who just lost a lot of friends. Deku is going to sit at the Hall of Justice, or at Mount Justice, let's just say. As there is one for Wally, he does come running back in. This is one of the only places he still knows. It's still the same. Him looking around. As he does get to see Duvel sitting there as Wally, he does a turn, about to start bolting to his room, since he doesn't want to talk to his friend. Things are weird, and by weird, he means incredibly weird. Because Deku, he goes to pop up right in front of him, bringing his hand up, and going to stop Wally. Before we're going to tell him, Wally's still a little too slow. Him giving a bit of a smile, and Wally does get a glare back at Deku. Before Deku is going to tell him, he's sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's what you're going to say. Duville, we are friends, man. Best friends, but you... You fucked my girlfriend, dude. You were dead. I wasn't dead. I'm going to go back in time. And then try and fix this. Duville, you... You asshole. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't your fault. Really. Go ahead and tell me why. Tell me how it's not your fault. Tell me how you didn't mean for things to get out of hand. Deku's just sitting there. And he does get to open his mouth. He died. He remembers hearing about it. Does he want to know how things are from his point of view? How about before he gets angry, he remembers. To him, Wally West died almost eight years ago. He'll give him a rundown of those eight years. He comes back to consciousness after two years of being a puppet. For the fucking light. Now, Wally, he does remember that. That's where his last memory was. You had, what was it? Cass was going to go try and talk down Newville. See if she can undo this brainwashing. But weakening him with kryptonite... That was sort of difficult, but they had Waller's help, and honestly, she didn't believe it whenever she heard Duvel talk about it, because of how serious he was, but Cass told him what it was, and he was just surprised. Plan A, for if Deku was ever supposed to encounter Superman and he turned evil, was literally a pair of kryptonite brass knuckles, and that was it. And, if need be, boxing gloves. So, 
and that tells you quite a bit. Superman could have been taken down with a simple fist fight. And Kryptonite, yeah. Weakens both of them, so minor destruction. And, well, the brass knuckles, maximum casualty if Duvel were to beat Superman to death. Now, luckily that did not happen. And Cass was able to take down Duvel. And he was put in the hospital. That's where he remembers things. And that does continue. He was trying to figure things out. You know what he did? He left because he was confused. He took off of Earth and shattered a planet out in space. That was how angry he was. That is what he did. He was mad because he lost his best friend. And Wally does stare at Deku. And Deku, he does actually somewhat get more mad. But there isn't any rage. No, there's... There's sadness. And Wally does see it. And Deku, Deku he does go tell him. He could have saved Lois Lane. He could have prevented Clark from doing everything. All of the death. But then they got abducted by aliens. Then they were put in a simulation. He is tired of people fucking with his head. And then there's the fact that the monitor, what he did was affect him with red kryptonite. And guess what? He feels like a piece of shit. And Wally does stare at his best friend. As Deku does continue. Yes. Yes, he did it. Him and Artemis did the deed. They did the tango. Is that what he wants to hear? Does he want him to hear about how he's so sorry he didn't realize he was alive? But hey, I boned your girlfriend, but we're still best buddies? Is that what he is expecting? Is he expecting an apology and he goes back in time and solves it and stops it? Guess what? There probably isn't another timeline to go back to. There is just this place. Wally? He needs to remember. That Earth was destroyed. This, though? This technically is their Earth. And Wally does start his friend surprised. And Deku continues on. He lets Wally have it. Everything that happened. The way she suffered. The way she was cast aside and went back to normal life after Oliver Queen was beaten to death by Superman. The symbol of hope for the world. And Wally, he hears it from his best friend. And Deku, he has at least turn and walk away. As there was one of her quarry, she came to see Duville, wanting to at least talk to him about her current situation. Now, Deku, he actually going to tell Cory. It's good that she's here. He sort of needs to go to a few other places. Now, Deku is going to disappear. And there actually is where Cl uh, Clark, what was I going to say Clark? There is where Wally... <coughs> He's a bit more surprised. And Deku is going to pop back up in Azrath. Him letting go of Cory, and at least going to tell her. He's going to leave her here for right now. They all need to talk, and he's going to go get everybody else. Cory is going to turn, expressing to Deville about how that would be fine before she's going to kiss him on the cheek. And Deku is going to bring his hand up. Okay, uh. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely going to be awkward. Deku gonna pop away. Him gonna pop up in other locations. Him gathering Cass. Him gathering Artemis. And Diana. And there actually is one of Deku. He currently does gonna find his way back inside the building. As there is where Deku is gonna walk up. And Kara, she's gonna see Deku. Her gonna turn and look to Giatu. If we're going to step forwards. And Deku, he doesn't want to just stand there. With the other Kara. As Kara, she's just trying to express. She's happy to see that her counterpart's away. Her going to watch her counterpart smash Duvilla across the face. With a fist. And Deku, he doesn't want to just gonna stand there with his head. As he does going to turn to look back to Kara. You're kidding, right? Hey, the damage was already done. This wasn't me. What are you talking about? This being where Raven is going to speak up. Yeah. They're going to discuss all this right here and right now. 
and like adults. Because it's definitely going to be an adjustment. And Deku, yeah. He's really not looking forward to all this. And with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.